Striking Coney Island. This is a weather story for you. It almost canceled our national pastime, the Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest. Yeah, and apparently before Joey Chestnut even took the stage, he had to rally the contestants to let the show go on. Which it must. It. Yeah. And they say he shall live forever. <laughs> I like when he gets the jaws going. All right, two-hour rain delay, but Joey Chestnut. He relishes the glizzy glory. He comes back and gets 62 dogs, beating the man in second place by 13. But nowhere near his own record of 76. I think the time change had a problem there. Maybe. Yeah, Chestnut's win extends his record win total to 16. Awesome. And Mickey Sudo took home the female prize, taking down 39 and a half hot dogs and buns. She's I mean, awesome, too. Yeah, yeah, it's like 4th of July. It's like fireworks. It has to happen. It has on, to happen. It appears delayed. Yeah. All right, so how about to celebrate Independence Day? Philly's favorite hockey mascot right there, Gritty, showing off some nice moves. This is on Twitter today. Yeah, check him out, repping the shred, because he's shredding, yes. white and blue. Shred, this, white, and blue. Yeah, this 4th <laughs> of July in the city where our founding fathers started it all. Looking good, Gritty. Well done. And get this, the Florida Keys celebrating its birthday, 200 years, with none other than a giant key lime pie. Yeah. That's a slice of paradise. Yes, it is. So the pie, which measured it's over 13 feet, 13 feet in diameter, is believed to be the world's biggest key lime pie. Sure. It took a lot of ingredients, 16 gallons <laughs> of key lime juice, almost 100 gallons of sweetened condensed milk, okay. and some 125 pounds of Grand Craft. We're being so specific that someone at home could like, take yeah. down the recipe. <laughs> All right, so the festivities mark the 200th anniversary of the establishment of Monroe County, which encompasses the entire Keys Island chain, July 3rd, 1823. So Key Lime Pie has long been identified with the Keys, the uh, Florida Keys, and all of its heritage there. Well done. A lot of pie. Thousands are out here in downtown Harrisburg today taking part in 4th of July activities. We'll have some more coming up after the break on the entertainment that will take place here on Front Street all throughout the evening. Heading towards day five of a state budget impasse and possibly some movement. The House scheduling a voting session tomorrow coming up. What a long-standing impact, uh, impasse, impact wise, will have on the people of the Commonwealth. Hello! into motion. So right now, Harrisburg sitting at 87, outside chance we hit 90, so that climate report still hasn't come out yet, but it will any moment now. And if it does, if we, had, if we do hit 90, this will likely be the start of our very first heat wave of 2023. Joel D. We know either way it's hot out there, but it's okay. The food and the fireworks, the big festival in downtown Harrisburg, has got plenty of people there as well. And they're ready to see what is the best. And that's where we have our Elise person joining us live this evening. All right, Elise, what are your favorites out there so far? We still have some time to get down there. Yes, I mean, it has been so fun out here so far. I'm right here by the stage, which is right along Front Street and State Street. So you can come out here and listen to some live music. There's also a beer garden, so you can get a glass of wine, a beer, a lemonade. And again, like I said, the live music has been taking part and will continue on until 9.15 tonight. And right now I'm joined by Steve, who has helped to facilitate all this live music. Walk me through what goes into planning, you know, an event like this for 4th of July. Uh, it really is a year-long process. We work really hard at trying to uh, bring a variety of different genres and really showcase the, the real immense talent that Central Pennsylvania has in its music scene. And, and, you know, that being said, what is different about planning an event for the 4th of July and then it's maybe a little different than some other ones throughout the year? Well, it's a one-day festival, and it's on an extremely important day. It is our, our nation's birthday, so it's a celebration for everybody. So making sure we have that really strong... Uh, representation and music from Central Pennsylvania is really important to us. Absolutely, it's so cool. I mean, we have a number of acts taking part on the stage today. Is there a few, you know, that really come to mind when you think about, when you talk about Central Pennsylvania? Well, really, all, all of the acts today, um, everything from Marissa Porter getting us kicked off this morning to Debo, follow it, followed by Vinyl Groove, uh, with some really good old Motown music tonight. It's just it's just an amazing honor to have all of this kind of talent here in Riverfront Park. 
Emily and Jody, I've been here for a little while now, and these musicians are rocking. This is so much fun, a great event to be at. And like I said, the music will be taking place until around 9.15 tonight, which is when the fireworks are set to start. So it's a ton of family fun. Like I said, you can come get a glass of wine, get a beer, get a lemonade. So much fun to be had right here on State Street in just downtown Harrisburg. For now, though, I'll send it back to you in the studio. And you might even meet Elise Person out there. Who knows? Good to see you, Elise, and uh, we'll check back with you later on. Folks, it's now been 15 years of Tiny Desk Concerts, and NPR celebrating the milestone in a big way. We're taking you behind the desk with some of the music's biggest stars. Plus, it's a somber anniversary in Highland Park, how the victims are being remembered one year after the mass shooting.